So first we're going to start with this article from Law 360 because I've never heard of this concept ever before. Uh, but this is what they say. Hot tubbing, formerly known as concurrent expert evidence technique, a phrase I've also never heard of, originates from Australia, where courts have been using the procedure for years. While not yet widespread in the United States, as in I've never heard of it, the technique has been used on occasions during claim construction hearings in U.S. patent cases. Again, I'm a patent lawyer. I have never heard of this ever. Judge Dontos says he expects it to facilitate frank and productive conversations. He says and thinks it will be ideal. Okay. So apparently what we're going to try to do is we're going to swear in multiple expert witnesses all at the same time, and we're going to be able to question them. And presumably they're going to question each other. Or if one says something, like one can raise their hand and says, no, I don't agree with that. And then they can like argue amongst themselves. Like just as a purely practical matter, I understand for a hearing because it's just the judge, but if if you're thinking about the jury, how you do this in a jury trial, I don't know procedurally like how you'd actually do it. Because think about it, you're getting like presumably at least two because each side is calling one witness, but they might have multiple experts each. So somewhere between two and some number of people are going to get on the stand and you're going to ask them one question and presumably get multiple answers and then them arguing amongst themselves and... It just in terms of the uh, the pre presentation of it all, it just seems so like I don't understand how this is going to work. Um, From the witness point of view, that would be such a like such a huge amount of pressure because it's already intimidating testifying at a trial. And I know that these are professionals and they're talking about their life's work so they're they're competent uh but it, it's still it's a it can be intimidating especially if you're being you know interviewed by uh, opposing counsel and they're trying to poke holes in what you're saying and they're trying to get you to contradict yourself and now not only are they trying to get you to contradict yourself but you also have someone sitting beside you that disagrees with you and they are also an expert in this field and this is also their life work <laughs> and they are also going to try to deconstruct everything that you say. So right. now you're getting it from two sides. I, and then you've got a judge that like if the other if the other expert says something um, that contradicts you, the judge can turn around to you and be like, and what do you have to say about that? <laughs> yeah. I just think as a jury, it would be very, very confusing hearing multiple people like arguing amongst themselves. So I, I have many questions on how this is done as a practical matter. But the um, article we just saw refers to this article, which says dark IPR, which I do know what that is, hot tubbing, and other terms IP attorneys, that would be me, should know, which apparently this is something I should know about. So we'll read a little bit more about what they said about hot tubbing, because I guess we're both trying to learn. Hot tubbing is a procedure in which experts from both sides sit together in the witness or jury box, presenting evidence and asking, answering questions from one another and the judge. Jack Zorhi of Ohio uses technique in an antitrust case. He says, throwing everyone in the hot tub at the same time allows the court counsel and experts to confront or splash each other directly, <laughs> resulting in a better chance of reaching a correct conclusion. This is a guy who went to a fairly prestigious law school was nominated by a president and was confirmed by a senate just you know okay fine although the technique hasn't been widespread in the u.s their examples of hot tubbing have been used during claim construction for trial attorneys used to being in control it can be a stress inducing experience yeah i'm, I'm stressed out just thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhat very anxious and possibly terrifying procedure for lawyers because you've completely lost control yeah, we like to have things organized. We're very type A kind of people. We like things that are organized and understood. Uh, this guy was introduced to the concept during a patent case in front of Judge Douglas Woodlock in the District of Massachusetts, who's been known to use the procedure. Well, there you go. Never been to, never been to Massachusetts. Never heard of this guy. So I guess keep my patent cases out of uh, Massachusetts <laughs> is the lesson for the day. <laughs> Until someone else figures out what the heck this is. 
ma'am. That is just entertaining. They should get a real hot tub, though. Just make things a little bit more friendly in such a hostile environment. There's so many jokes that just come to mind. Hot tub law machine. It's like, you know, <laughs> slip you. Mr. Lint calls it internet mode. Do do we do we have to get you in the bathing suits? What? Because we have to extend this metaphor as, as much as possible. So we've got them into uh, what we're now going to call a hot tub. So what are we calling bathing suits in this exercise? Are we just going to call them normal suits, or, or are we going to come up with something that we're going to call bathing suits? How deep can we make this metaphor go? Is the is the chlorine that goes into the hot tub like the rules of evidence that keep everything organized and clean? Is that the chlorine in this metaphor? <laughs> Do hot tubs usually have chlorine, though? Yeah. Well, okay. They have the equivalent of it, sure. I'm thinking of, like, personal hot tub stuff where you just use tap water. Yeah. Well, no, I at least uh, my parents had a hot tub briefly, and they put um, pool chemicals in it. So I don't think it's atypical. I am being corrected. You, Yeah, you yeah. do put chlorine in there. Yeah. So what, what are the uh, water jets of the hot tub in this metaphor? Um, <laughs> the, the questions of the jury. I don't know. And and uh, since we can relate this back to patent law, I will bring into mind that Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller magician fame does have one patent, and it is for a hot tub related thing. It's called the Jill Jet. Tactical, based on the name, would you like to take a guess as to what the Jill Jet does? <laughs> For your balls. No, no, Jill, <laughs> Jill, not Jack. Jill? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is an adult water jet. Okay. Yeah, so what is the Jill jet oh equivalent my. of this uh of this uh metaphor? <laughs> Oh my god. Pat it, pat it granted.